Catholic, uh, bringing you another video sharing with you the results of the online survey that you've kindly been answering online. I shared with you a few days ago a video called Seven uh, Phases of Failure. It seems to have resonated with quite a few people. I'll be sharing people's uh, comments uh, in the next video, but today I want to share with you uh, the nuts and bolts of the results and how they all link together because uh, what is it uh, that uh, links all of the questions that I asked in the survey, how do they fit together? The things that people are saying that they're struggling with, uh, how are they all connected? Because believe it or not, they actually are. So today I'm going to share with you what I call the 14 steps to success, okay? We've got 14 circles on the board. I'm gonna explain what they are and how they relate to the survey and the responses that we've had, okay? I apologize as always uh, for my handwriting and for my drawing. Um, I would never have made uh, a, a good teacher in school, I don't think, because I can't draw to save my life. Um, but uh, I will make sure that I explain it so that uh, you can always make notes if you want to uh, and you know what I'm putting on the board. Okay, now the 14 steps to success. Uh, we start with this red circle in the middle, okay? What does that red circle represent? I'm going to put an S in the middle, an S in the middle, because that stands for support. Every uh, person who succeeds with their clutter clearing and becomes clutter free forever uh, seeks appropriate support. Now, Everybody's definition of appropriate support is slightly different. Uh, when I had my clutter challenge back in 2001, I struggled to find appropriate support. That's why I went out and spent a year figuring out how to clear my own clutter, because there was help out there, uh, but they were people who would essentially help me have a blitz. Uh, or uh, put things in storage, out of sight, out of mind. Uh, it wouldn't actually help me learn how to clear my clutter, how to make safe decisions, how to deal, deal with paperwork clutter. Because we all know that paperwork clutter comes in our home and onto the conveyor belt on a daily basis, doesn't it? Um, so the support that was out there wasn't going to teach me uh, and give me the skills to stay clutter free forever and that's what I want you to do. I had enough blitzes to last me a lifetime. Uh, so finding appropriate support is really, really crucial uh, first step, whether that is um, getting somebody to help you, whether that's getting access to the process, a process that works, is guaranteed to work, uh, whatever support that may be in, okay? The second step, uh, that we're going uh, that, that we need to take is what we call um, feeling motivated so I'm going to put an M in that box okay the fact that once we've got appropriate support we need to make sure that we feel motivated if we don't feel motivated guess what probably not going to do anything um it's it's uh, uh when like when we were young being made to do something going to see family members that we didn't really want to see you don't, you don't feel motivated do you and my goodness uh, the days stretch out when you're not motivated when you don't want to do it uh, now what's interesting is that 26 percent of people 26% of people uh, have said that they feel motivated. Okay, so 26% of people who answered the online survey have reached this point, okay? What happens next? Uh, the next step uh, is what we call making time to do the doing. Making time is such a huge, huge struggle, isn't it? When people contact me and they say, Claire, I need, I need help with my clutter. Uh, and I say, okay, great, I can help you as long as you are prepared to make at least three hours once a week, uh, ideally three hours twice a week uh, for me to help you, I can help you. Oh, well, I don't have time. Okay, but I can't help you if you aren't prepared to make time. Uh, it, there's no magic wand. There's no 
go to sleep, take this pill, go to sleep, wake up, all your clutter will be cleared. Sadly, it does require uh, making time because we're going to need to create habits. We need to get it. You need to get into a routine of doing the doing. So uh, it requires your time and my time in order uh, to succeed. Uh, people are struggling with making time uh, on a regular basis, uh, which leads us on nicely to the fourth step on the road to success. The fourth step, I'm going to put an R in that box, in that circle, I should say, an R. What does that stand for? Routine. Because it's all very well making time and we can often make time every now and again. That's what's called a blitz. I did that lots and lots of times. I made a hot time, I, made, I set aside a whole day or a whole weekend. I remember once taking a week off work uh, I took some of my annual leave to blitz my clutter um, and I did blitz some of it, uh, not all of it. Clearly, I didn't tell my colleagues what I was doing on my annual leave. I told them I was staying at home uh, doing some DIY uh, and uh, some some uh, decorating. Um, but um, so we can all make time every now and again. But can we all make time to get into a routine to do a little and often like i say i work with people who are prepared and, and able to put aside at least three hours once a week that's called a routine okay uh, now what's interesting is that only nine and a half percent nine and a half percent of people who completed the online survey said that they are succeeding with getting into a routine of doing their clutter clearing sessions. So a large proportion of people are probably making time every now and again, but not regularly, uh, not routinely. The next step uh, on the road to success, so one, two, three, four, five, the fifth step is controlling the accumulation. I'm gonna put an A in there for accumulation. Okay, the accumulation area of our conveyor belt. What things come into our home, onto the conveyor belt, through that front door. What sorts of things is that? Well, that is, by and large, the shopping. The impulse shopping. What causes the impulse shopping? Things like the sales, the buy one, get one free offers. Uh, what else do we have? Those newspapers, magazines, the freebie ones, as well as the ones that we buy. Another source of accumulation are things that we print off the computer. I'll look at that later. Never quite get round to it, do we? So controlling the accumulation, what comes onto our conveyor belt, into our home, really, really crucial if we're going to succeed uh, with clearing our clutter forever. Okay. Now, in terms of the accumulation area, 28%, which is really encouraging, 28% of people in the survey said that they are succeeding uh, with controlling the accumulation area of the conveyor belt. That's really, really good. Uh, again, we're consciously controlling it. Um, uh, my clients always, uh, uh, once a month, are identifying something that they can consciously control. We just take one thing at a time. Trying to trying to control everything at once uh, can be a real, real challenge. So 28% of people have said that they're managing to control the accumulation area, uh, which is really, really great. Okay, the next, the next uh, is continuing to clear both the physical and to-do list clutter clearing, okay? To-do list, do list, T-D-L, to-do list. How many times have we created a pile of clutter when we've had a blitz and it's a pile of, oh, I need to do something with that. I need to mend it, I need to make it, I need to put those pictures in an album, I'm going to do some scrapbooking, it's a craft project, uh, it's a hobby, it's uh, committee meeting notes that we need to read. We, we put things in a pile that need to be actioned, put it on a to-do list, never quite make uh, the time to actually do the doing, do it, 
okay so it's not just the physical backlog of clutter that we've got to work on we need to work on the actions associated with the things in that clutter now then this is uh, a, a represented and this may be another way uh, that you accumulate clutter I did I did this uh, I, I still do it to a certain degree I have to consciously control it making lists of things that need to be done then you can't find the list that you made so you start another list and uh, then when you do start to put all the lists together I went through a phase where I would get a notebook write a list of the things that needed to be done, the to-do list, and then I'd cross off perhaps one or two things on it, and then because I didn't like the look of it, I would rewrite the rest of the to-do list. So I spent more time writing and rewriting and reorganising the to-do list than I did actually doing anything on the to-do list. Please tell me I'm not the only one <laughs> who, who did that. Uh, and again, like I say, I have to consciously control it uh, uh, on a regular basis uh, when I find that I'm, my, my to-do lists are growing uh, I have to nip that in the bud um, so again the to-do lists are a huge issue we need to get a balance between making decisions on the things in our clutter and doing the things on the to-do list 15% of people in the survey said that they've got this under control so many more people struggling with this that's what 85 percent of people uh, are not succeeding uh, or struggling with getting a balance between physical clutter clearing and to-do list clutter clearing okay so when we have uh, uh, found um, appropriate support we're motivated we make time we get into the routine of making time we've got the accumulation area under control and we're balancing physical clutter with to-do list clutter that's when the clutter starts to clear so i'm going to put cc for clutter clearing we have to go through these steps in order to start to see the clutter clearing no wonder that we get frustrated uh, and impatient to see results. Now, 5% of people, 5% of people have said that they have managed to clear more than one room. 5% of people have managed to clear more than one room since Christmas. Okay, so 95% of people have cleared less than one room since Christmas. It's hardly surprising when we understand the other steps that we need to go through before we even manage to clear some clutter. Does that, does that make sense? Hopefully so. Okay, the next step, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eighth step. Uh, we manage to keep areas clear. So I'm going to put K c keep clear because again we may make time on an ad hoc basis to have a blitz we may even clear some clutter when we have a blitz because we've made some time but the question is can we keep it clear hmm. huge huge challenge uh, which is reflected in the fact that 20 percent of people said that they managed to keep areas clear 20% of people manage to keep areas clear, which means 80% of people uh, don't manage to keep areas clear. Frustrating, isn't it? Okay, the next step. When we clear some clutter and we can keep areas clear, we start to see and feel a difference. SFD. See and feel a difference. Okay. Only then will we get to the point where we notice the difference. Now, we will probably notice quicker than others in our home. Because who knows, if we have made time, not as a routine, but made time to have a blitz, we may have cleared some clutter, but we don't manage to keep it clear. So we and others perhaps don't see and feel a difference. Does that make sense? So it, it can be a struggle to get to this point. Okay, what happens after we manage to see and feel a difference? We feel more in control. In, con in control. 
See, I told you I'm not very good at drawing on the board. In control, I see. In control of our clutter. Now, of those people who completed the online survey, 25% said that they, they feel in control of their clutter. That's quite high, actually. Uh, given that 20% of people don't manage uh, to keep areas clear, it may be that they feel in control because when they do do a, 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 um, a clear some clutter, it's in a blitz. So, so we feel in control after we've had a blitz, don't we? Okay, moving on. The next one, which is really crucial and only happens once we have uh, done these other steps, once we're in the routine of clearing some clutter, keeping it clear, seeing and feeling a difference, uh, and uh, feeling in control, we manage to stay motivated. Stay motivated. Yeah? How many people do you think in the survey said that they managed to stay motivated? 15%. 15% managed to stay motivated. <gasps> It's hardly surprising uh, that, that we are struggling to succeed with our clutter clearing when we are perhaps not managing to uh, complete these steps. Okay, next. When we manage to stay motivated, uh, then we manage to create the habits. We're in the routine of doing the doing. We're controlling the accumulation. We're working on the to-do list as well as the physical clutter. We're clearing the clutter. We're keeping it clear. Therefore, we are able to create the habits that we're going to need to stay clutter-free forever. Uh, um, well, I haven't got a number for how many people uh, have managed to create the habits because uh, there wasn't a question in the survey that addressed that. Um, but it may be that you are struggling to create the habits because we haven't got these other steps in place yet. And then when we can create the habits, we manage to clear the backlog. CB, that doesn't stand for Claire Baker. That stands for clear the backlog. Okay. So how many people have managed to clear the backlog? Well, in the survey, 91% of people, 91% of people said that they have more than two rooms still to clear. More than two rooms left to clear. Okay. So it's hardly surprising, given that we've got uh, a dwindling uh, percentage of results of people uh, who are managing to complete the various steps. But once we manage to clear the, clear the backlog, that is when we get success. And we manage to stay clutter free forever. Yay! So can you see yourself on those 14 steps to success? Do you recognise where the particular challenge for you may be? Hopefully so. Now, just as a comparison, those people who are on uh, one of my courses, uh, they have just completed eight weeks of the course. Uh, so they have completed two months of, of doing uh, their clutter clearing with my help, live sessions uh, every week. So just as a comparison, just want to put what they said uh, when I asked them about where they are uh, on the 14 steps to success. 100% uh, of them have got appropriate support. Easily done because they uh, booked their place on the course. 100% of them are motivated. They're motivated uh, because they're on the course uh, they, uh, and uh, they wouldn't have booked on the course if they weren't motivated to, 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 to finally deal with their clutter challenge. 100% of them are making time. And 100% of them are making time 
uh, in a routine. They are doing at least one clutter clearing session with me live every week. Um, so uh, they've kind of got these first four steps nailed just by booking their place uh, on a course with me. How about the accumulation? How do people on a course uh, with me manage uh, with the accumulation? Well, 83% of them, let me put it down here, 83% of them have got it nailed. Uh, are succeeding with controlling, minimising, massively reducing the accumulation area of their conveyor belt. We start doing that from day one, actually. Um, when they, when, when people join a course with me, they get access to a getting started uh, course week. Um, I suppose it's a bit like Freshers' Week, uh, first week at, uh, at university, uh, where we go through things, we explain things, and uh, we do a, a particular exercise to start controlling that accumulation area right from the first day of the course. So it's hardly surprising that by now, week eight, 83% of them are saying that they've got it nailed. Nobody is struggling with the accumulation area of their conveyor belt anymore. How about the to-do list? 15% uh, of people doing it on their own uh, have succeeded. 72% of people on the course at the moment have succeeded or are succeeding with clearing their physical clutter and their to-do list clutter. That's because when they join me on the live sessions every week, I always uh, uh, encourage them to work on their to-do list if it's getting a bit overwhelming. There's too many things on there. Okay, how about the clutter clearing? How how people doing? Week eight of doing a weekly clutter clearing session with me. 65% of them, 65% of them have cleared more than one room. 65% of them have cleared more than one room in eight weeks. That's not bad. Uh, I fully expect that that number will go up to about 85, 90 by the end of the course. Okay, moving on, keeping areas clear. 20% of you said that uh, you were succeeding at keeping areas areas clear. How about the people on my course? 81%, 81% of people on my course joining me one, at least once a week for a live clutter clearing session are managing to keep areas clear. That's quite impressive. We know how the clutter grows back like mushrooms overnight. Okay, moving on. Uh, seeing and feeling a difference. Now, I know I didn't ask you this uh, in the online survey, but 87%, 87% of people on one of my courses are saying that they can see and feel a difference uh, in their home in terms of the class. Well, it's hardly surprising uh, if 65% uh, of them have cleared uh, uh, more than one room. Uh, because you would see and feel a difference, wouldn't you, if you had one clutter-free room in your home? Uh, what about feeling in control? Those who were on, uh, uh, answered the online survey said 25%. What about those on the course? 94% of people on the course are saying that they feel in control. So even though they may not have cleared as much of the clutter as they would want to, ideally, we'd all love it to disappear overnight, 94% of them are feeling in control, uh, which is truly significant. Imagine what it must feel like to know that you are in control of the clutter. Just by continuing to do the doing, you will clear it. 94% of those uh, who are on a course with me at the moment say that that's how they feel. Moving swiftly on, how many of those on the course are saying that they uh, still feel motivated? Um, 92, 92% are managing to stay motivated. So 94% of people say that they feel in control. 92% are saying uh, they are still motivated. It's not a coincidence that those responses uh, are so close but when you feel in control then that's going to help make you feel motivated uh, creating habits how many of my course members feel that they are managing to to to, to create the habits and have started to actually create the habits remember we're at week eight uh, on the courses 69 
69% of my course members after eight weeks say that they feel that they have managed to create some habits uh, that are going to help them stay clutter free. Yes. And then finally, how many of my, uh, my course members have managed to clear the backlog of clutter? How many people uh, uh, have said that they've managed to uh, uh, clear the backlog of clutter? Well, um, uh, 97 percent uh, of people, uh, 90, sorry, 66 percent, read the right number, Claire, 66 percent of people on my course have said that they've got more than two rooms left to clear. 66 percent of people say that they've still got two rooms or more left to clear. So, how many people have actually succeeded in eight weeks of, of weekly help with me? They've managed to get motivated, make time, get into the routine, control the accumulation area, balance the to-do list, clutter clearing with physical clutter clearing. They've cleared some clutter, they've kept it clear, they've stayed, stayed, um, they, they can see and feel a difference, they feel in control, they're, uh, um, uh, staying motivated, they've created habits, uh, they have cleared backlog. So how many of my clients have managed to actually reach success uh, and clear all their clutter? In eight weeks, 34% of those people who are on a course with me have managed to succeed and clear their clutter. And because they have created the habits at this step, they will be able to stay clutter-free forever. Okay, I know, very messy board now, very cluttered board. I do apologise uh, for that. Does that uh, help you understand where uh, the challenges for you may be in terms of your steps to success? Do let me know below where you think your particular challenge is. Have you yet got appropriate support that is helping you to get motivated, make time, get into a routine? These first four steps uh, were achieved by my course members by simply booking a place uh, on a course with me. Uh, so if we can take four steps uh, without actually having to deal with any of the clutter, uh, that that may make uh, may make life uh, a lot lot different. Just out of um, one final thing to share with you, fifty five percent of people said that procrastination was stopping them from starting their steps to success. Fifty five percent of people said that they are struggling with procrastination. And 65% of people in the online survey said that procrastination was uh, what, what they believe is their biggest challenge to succeeding at clearing their clutter. So procrastination is going to stop us even starting these 14 steps to success. So getting appropriate support will help us overcome that procrastination and start the 14 steps to success. And if you knew that you could actually achieve success, if you were one of the 34% of people who could achieve success and clear uh, their black backlog of clutter in just eight weeks, would it be worth taking that first step? Something worth thinking about, perhaps. I hope that's been useful. I hope as well it helps you realise that you are not alone. You are perfectly, perfectly normal. These, these, these figures uh, truly suggest uh, that, that we, are, we are amongst um, fellow clutterholics. Uh, once a clutterholic, always a clutterholic, I say, like I, my confession uh, about my to-do lists. Uh, you know, but again, we can consciously uh, um, do something about it. Uh, if we're prepared to make the time and get into the routine, we can succeed. Uh, and as my course members have demonstrated, 34% of them are already there. Uh, they've got uh, clutter-free homes uh, in just eight weeks. All right, leave your comments below uh, in the next video. I'm going to share some of the, the, the things that are, uh, specific things that people have been saying uh, and sharing 
Um, I will not use names, it will all be anonymous, uh, but uh, I, I think it would be really helpful to turn, if you like, the figures and the facts uh, into uh, people's experiences and share some of them. Uh, but just so just leave any comments, thoughts, anything you'd like to share in that comment box below, and I will see you very soon. Take care.